Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Game. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus: Bjorn's Path. So, I think I have found out maybe what I'm doing wrong. Um, so I'm gonna just select not drink because I actually noticed that the dialogue changes a bit. If you don't drink, someone will pick it up right here, guys. Please sit back and enjoy. Let me change you for the next 20 minutes, and let's see if we can slip away when the bear slips away too. Okay, here we go. Alarm chain, you're up. Off we go. All right. I don't feel like drinking. I already feel lightheaded. I don't need alcohol to make me even more woozy and incoherent. Thanks, but but I'm good. Do you have a soft drink or soda, maybe? I do, actually. So, three beers and one soda coming right up. <laughs> hey, did I miss anything? You almost missed a warm beer. You want a bottle? Sure thing. Are we doing anything or just sitting around? We were just getting to play a game of spin the bottle. Oh, cool. No, wait. Did you say spin the bottle? Why do you want to play that? Because it's a lot of fun. And gets people closer to each other. Well, you could say that. Travis slowly looks around the room, clearly puzzled. I don't think I'm up for it. Sorry. Huh? Why? I mean, do you really want to play a kissing game? Huh? What do you mean? Isn't spin the bottle the game where you kiss the person the bottle points at? <laughs> what? No! You're supposed to ask a question or give a dare to a person the bottle points at. Oh, so it's truth or dare. Wow, I was really confused for a moment. That's fine, then. Should be fun. So, for a start, we need a bottle. Anyone finish their beer yet? Blake looks around the room, but no one replies. Okay, I can fix that. He raises the bottle to his snout and downs the remaining half of his beer in a few big gulps. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Okay, everyone ready? How about the rules? No taking back, no altering the questions or dares. Let's see, let's keep going all fine. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, place the middle of the table and mix the bottle from Lake. He spins it enthusiastically so that it fall almost falls off the table. Oh, Miko, looks like you're first. Truth or dare? Let's go with truth. What's your favorite mug? Oh, Dolph, okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, spin the bottle now too, Miko. Okay, truth or dare? What's the stupidest thing you've ever bought? Oh, not an easy one. Hmm. I'd say the fancy coffee machine I got when I moved to the dorm. Oh, right. This has always puzzled me. That kid has a shiny espresso machine with a grinder in his room at the dorm, but I've never seen him use it. I thought a nice quality coffee would help me with studying, but that was just a rationalization. I just always wanted to have one because they look so cool. It turned out I don't like espressos and it requires a lot of maintenance, so I just have instant coffee and brewed in oat milk with sugar. I find it hard to believe that anyone can enjoy black coffee other than extreme masochists. This time the lion spins the bottle and it stops at Torolf. Oh, Torolf! A truth or dare? Let's start with the truth. What was the time you spent the most money on one meal? Oh, let's, uh, let's see if we can skip ahead just a little bit. I was also wondering. Bears are all hung. Is that true? Uh, let's skip ahead just a bit. Okay, we'll do truth. Here we go, here we go. Real meat of it. All right. I've been wondering about this. What made you pick up photography? Hmm, I'm not really sure myself when I first thought of buying a camera. I wasn't even that interested in it before I got my first camera. I think I like the aesthetic of analog photography, and that's why I got one. In hindsight, I just... I think I, ju I, think I just chose whatever hobby seemed interesting to me and stuck with it. If it's time for me to, it's time for me to spin the bottle, which stops on... Bjorn again. Oh, Bjorn. Uh, truth or dare? Question, please. What makes you happy? Well, writing, mostly. But also chocolate and sunsets. Writing? What do you write? Oh, you just any kind. You know, like essays for the classes or, or letters. You write letters? Sometimes, yeah. That's cool. Letters are fantastic. <laughs> really? How? It's nice. Talking, taking the time to compose a nine compose and handwrite someone a letter and then waiting for a response for days, weeks, or even months? There's something meaningful in it. I think the problem was I was using an outdated build. That's probably it. At least I think so. I never wrote a letter. Oh. Bjorn grabs a bottle and spins it, and this time it stops on Travis. Tra- <coughs> Oh, Laura, bless me. Travis, truth or dare? Maybe a question this time. What are you planning to do after you finish your studies? I don't think you ever told me. 
Foremost, I want to move somewhere west. I'd like to meet the directors of my favorite games, like Yoko Taro. Working for him would be the dream made, made true for me. Really? But you're studying neuroscience, not game development. There are many different roles in game dev, and I don't want to be limited in choice only to only to it. Maybe I could become a, dire a creative director and use the knowledge I got at the university to better create emotional responses in players. And most of the people in game dev I know finish studies unrelated to programming, like psychology or musical composition. Along with their degrees, they introduce different skill sets and points of view to the team. I hope that goes well for you. Now Travis spins the ball on and stops on Lake again. <laughs> Truth, please. Truth, huh? Hmm. Who was your first crush? Oh, uh, I don't know. That must have been long ago. Surely you remember at least one, maybe from a movie? Hmm. <laughs> Lake? <laughs> Lake, why are you taking off your shirt? The rules say I have to take off an article of clothing, but a shirt barely counts. I think we agreed that we're skipping the penalties. And even if not, I think we can all agree it's enough. Oh? Is this the updated? I think this is the updated Toral one? I think so. <laughs> You're off the hook. You can spin the bottle now. Oh, okay. <laughs> now Lake spins the bottle on the table, and it almost flies off the edge before stopping, pointing at Bjorn. I'm starting to think he might already be drunk. Question, please. Okay, how about... From all of us here, is there someone you'd like to sleep with? <laughs> I guess I'm losing the hoodie, then. Okay, I think it's going out of paw. How about we do something else? Uh, we could switch to Never Have I Ever. It's much friendlier fun. Hell, this was fun. Maybe a bit spicy, but it's bound to, but it's bound to happen with this kind of games. I think I need a break, though. See you guys at, see you guys at supper? Yep, yeah, here we go. I was using an outdated build. Oh, okay. But everything is fine, right? Yeah, don't worry about me. Oh, that sucks. I like having him around. Should I go after him? I kind of want to stay and see where this goes, but I want to keep Bjorn company even more. So, are we getting back to spin the bottle? I would go with Never Have I Ever now. Everyone wants to get... Everyone, everyone gets a turn in that game. I'll grab more beer first, though. I don't want to ruin your fun, but maybe it's enough for now. I'd say it's time for something stronger, personally. I feel like I should do something. Besides, I doubt I could I doubt I could have a good time here while I'm sitting and wondering how Bjorn is doing. You know what? I'll go too. I need a breather. Aw, oh, don't leave us. Sorry, you'll just do fine without me. Four people is easily enough for party games. I'll leave the rest of them and follow after Bjorn. Aw, oh, poor Lake. Bjorn left the door open. I knock first before entering though. Garvin? He's sitting on a bed, already with his already without his hoodie. He's looking tired as if this was the longest day of his life. Hey, how are you feeling? Tired. You didn't feel like playing with him anymore? Not really. I'm not sure why, but I got an introspective mood all of a sudden. I get it. I had fun too. Even got a little bit out of a little bit too much at the end. I think I'm at my limit of social interactions for today. Oh, should I go too? That's something else. I wouldn't want to sit in a group, but sitting alone wouldn't do me any good right now either. I was thinking of writing a bit. I was writing for a bit now, though, so I won't be the best company for a while. I don't mind that, but in that case, I'll go grab my laptop and work on my photos in the meantime. Sounds good. Laughs and enthusiastic voices seep through the door as I pass by. I don't encounter anyone else in the corridor. When I come back, Bjorn is already sitting at the table writing in his notebook. I get comfortable in the I get comfortable in the other bed, propping myself up against the wall, and transfer my photos from today onto my laptop. Just a tad more saturation on the cyans, and this one looks fine. I love working on photos. Capturing a scene is half the is a, is half the success, and the other is editing it to look like the scene in your head. That's one huge upside to digital photography. Flexibility. Hmm. Hmm? A rhythmical tapping of the bear's paw on the floor brings me back from the screen, brings me back from the screen to reality. How's it going with the photos? Quite well. I'm pretty much done. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the tapping doesn't cease. And how's writing? Awful. I just crossed out everything I wrote in the past half hour. The tapping stops, but the tension in Bjorn's voice remains. Fuck it, I gotta relax. Would you mind? What do you think about, uh, uh, hookah? 
What do I think about hookah? I don't know if I have an opinion at all. Did you ever try it? Uh, no. <laughs> do you want to? I, I guess. Anything I should know about it? There's tobacco inside, right? Not some opium or anything of sorts. Just tobacco. Isn't it, like, harmful? Tobacco usually is. Of course it is, like alcohol, which damages DNA as a known carcinogen. But you still drink and smoke. That's how people are, self-destructive and short-sighted. I never cease to question my choices, yet I still make them. <laughs> In fact, I remember reading that hookah is worse than cigarettes because of the coals. But also much nicer all around, and effect and affects and as an experience. The smoke gets cooled down as it travels through the pipe, and some of the heaviest substances are filtered by the water, so you can smoke a lot of that. I didn't know you smoke. I haven't seen you with a cigarette. And besides, almost nobody does now. I don't smoke often, and I never touch cigarettes. Sitting up and cleaning a hookah afterwards is so filly that I rarely feel like it, so it minimizes the risk of getting addicted to nicotine. And that's supposed to relax you? It does, yeah. I look out at the window at the mountains stretching from the horizon far into the gray sky. I've never done stuff like this, not even a cigarette behind the school in my teens. But I trust Bjorn, and frankly, I am curious. Wait, are we even allowed to smoke here? No, definitely. That's why I neutralized the smoke detector with the aluminum foil. The smell should be gone by the morning if we leave the window open overnight, so don't worry about that either. Try some. I think I could try a bit. Okay, I'll set it up for us then. Bjorn fishes out a small shisha, shisha from behind the bed. I expected something bigger. This one really is tiny and compact. For the next few minutes he sets it up, and indeed it turns out to be a lot of hassle. Ah, he even had to bring a blowtorch to light up the coals. But after ten minutes or so, the tobacco, cherry and mint scented, is in the bowl. Water is in the hookah, and the pipe is attached, and the coals are burning. All done! Bjorn seems to be happy with himself, admiring his work. He grabs the pipe and takes a full lungful of the smoke, which then pours out from his nose in a surprisingly small amount. I have, to ki I have to kindle the tobacco first, and, uh, and only the heat it gets is from the coals and we puff on the hookah. I nod and observe the process. Bjorn breathes in. Coals burn bright red. Smoke through, through, flows through the pipe and through the... Smoke flows through the pipe and through the water as air bubbles. Next puff and Bjorn exhales a cloud of smoke four times as big as the previous one. It disperses in the air slowly, carrying a strong artificial scent of cherries. Now it's ready. Bjorn passes me the pipe and I eye the tapered tip suspiciously. So, how do I use this? You put the tip in your snout and inhale the smoke into your lungs, just as if you were breathing. And the smoke is rather cool, but it shouldn't burn your throat. I nod and do as told, then I immediately start coughing. Everything okay? You said it wouldn't burn. Well, maybe a tiny bit, if you're not used to the sensation at all. Try again, but inhale slower and less forcefully. That should give the smoke more time to cool down, too. I try again, and this time I'm able to inhale a lungful of smoke. It tastes of mint, mostly, numbing the inside of my snout. Then I exhale, the smoke tickling my nostrils as a whole cloud of it escapes from me. Wow, this looks cool. Yeah, that's half the fun. And the other half? The effects. Suddenly a wave of dizziness hits me with the force of a tsunami. I have to hold on to the bed so I don't fall back. Whoa! <laughs> These ones, exactly. Really? I don't know if this was nice. It's not really unpleasant either, though. I already feel lightheaded, but at the same time, my thoughts are clear. Still, this is just one puff so far. <laughs> Maybe you should take it easy, though. You're rather, you're, you're rather lightweight, I bet. Compared to Bjorn, I sure am. I pass the pipe to Bjorn, and he takes a big puff, then tilts his head upwards, letting the smoke spill over from his open snout. Ah, I really needed this. You were really looking, you were really looking up tight today. Yeah, tell me about it. It's not my month. Things aren't going too well for me, and then there's this literal literary contest. I'd rather not think about it, even. Right, sorry. I wouldn't want to give him another meltdown. Can you pass the pipe? Oh, sure. This really is nice. It feels satisfying to puff on something. Letting out clouds of smoke is fun, too. I see you're liking it. I think I do. I had some good, good evenings and great conversations with it. It's mostly a social activity, or at least that's how I see it. A nice alternative to alcohol, though it also goes well with it. Does it, uh, does it, hmm? As for alcohol, yeah, I get fucked up, Carvin. Yeah, we're gonna get fucked up. <laughs> we'll save this part. Oh, as for, okay. Do you happen to have some? I do, actually. Enough to last us through the evening. I'm not a heavy drinker, so even a beer or two is enough to last me through the evening. 
A beer for both of us, then. Two bottle caps pop, followed by a wave of, ha of hoppy aroma, mixing with the artificial cherry. Here! So, do you do this often? Oh, definitely not. Mostly when I feel nostalgic. Bjorn takes the pipe back and puffs on the hookah some more, observing the smoke dispersing. Have you ever wondered how it would be? How it would be to a? Have you ever wondered how it'd be to be a bird? You too? I think of this often. To be born into a world that's not yours. Do you think the world is ours? Undoubtedly, we share it with the other forms of life, but we made it our own, for better or worse. That sounds like a big responsibility. And we're getting better at acknowledging it. Our culture is progressing. We're starting to feel empathy towards our surroundings. Can you imagine that in the beginnings of culture, only adult males were seen as subjects, and as everything else, and everything else was seen as an object? An adult male could, an adult male could emphasize with another adult, could emphasize and empathize. An adult male could empathize with another adult male only. Then they started to consider women people too. Then they learned to empathize with children. Laws guaranteeing just and equal treatment were introduced. It took us a while to learn to empathize with different sexualities and then with people of different cultures. Now we're finally starting to grasp that other animals are living beings too. Learning to empathize is how a culture progresses. You can observe that by how many of us are abstaining from eating any meat now. I'm glad I was born now, not a few thousand years ago. Oh. Even a few decades earlier would have made a huge difference. We're living in a fan, fast changing times. At least now, living as a bird, you wouldn't risk being shot for someone's leisure. Yeah, it does sound rather fucked up. I often wonder if birds understand that the world around them isn't natural. That was built by us. Do you think they know that trains and cars and buses are our own creation, not something that's always existed? If, it was a, if, I, if I was a bird, I'd think I'd have a reason to doubt that the cars were always here and are as natural as the trees that shade them. Another cloud of smoke. I make one too. They merge together into one big cloud, then disperse into the air, into the air already clouded, into the already clouded air. It's good to have you here. Hookah alone is nowhere near as fun. I'm happy to be here too, you know. You wouldn't prefer to be with your friends? You're my friend too. And no, not right now. I'm having more fun here than I had back there. You know, you're the first person to come and visit me here without an explicit invitation. I feel like I always have to invite everyone, everyone, my, everything myself. Initiate everything myself. I'm not a person anyone remembers about. I don't get invited to events, and if I want to meet with anyone, I have to be the, I have to be the one to invite them. Do you know this feeling? Like the whole world is ignoring you. That nobody's ever thinking about you. That you're always a second-rate friend. This sucks. It's as if I was never interesting enough, forgettable, and replaceable. But not with you, somehow. So again, thank you for being here with me. Well, thanks. I didn't really do anything. I just like you, so I'm here. That's already a lot. I think we all, we, I think we all feel that sometimes. These are just our feelings, though. It doesn't mean it really is like that. Our minds like to play tricks on us. Where did this sudden wave of emotions come from, though? Apart from this one meltdown earlier today, Bjorn seemed rather restrained in his emotions. We had some more serious talks, but I didn't think he's capable of bearing, him, bearing, bearing himself like that before me. Well, I'm feeling a bit lightheaded after the hookah already. Everything seems soft and tingly. And frankly, I don't like how we filter ourselves sober. We stop ourselves from saying things we want to say because we're afraid. We're afraid of physical contact, too. We're afraid of expressing our feelings. We calculate how emotional we can allow ourselves to be in a certain situation to keep ourselves restrained. I suppose it's sometimes necessary, but this is why this is the But this way we don't live to the fullest and end up full of regrets and resentment. Do you wanna do you want an apple? I have an apple with me. Sure, th thanks. Bjorn splits the apple with his paws and passes me a half. Wow, that was neat. Thanks. It's sweet but also tart. Not perfect, but it's good. Hey, something was bothering me. Uh, say, if you're struggling with it so much and you don't even like it, then why are you still studying neuroscience? If you want to talk about it now, that is. Uh, you mentioned that you didn't have a choice, but you never told me what was what that was about. I thought you'd guess, actually, but maybe your experiences were vastly different than mine. My parents wanted me to. Simple as that. I live with them now, and I have no income on my own, so it's not like I had much choice. But if you didn't study, you'd have to fight. You'd have the time to find a regular job. Maybe, but I owe it to them. I owe it to them how? They did a lot for me. They sacrificed a lot for me, too. They want me to study something that can provide me a good life because they care about me. They're right about this. I can't argue with it. But you don't want to do this, do you? Hmm. I don't. But I still think it's the only sensible and good thing to do. I don't reply to that. The smoke in the room disperses the light, softening the shadows. Neither of us took a puff of 
puffed for some time now, so the coals turned all so the coals turned all white from the ash. Bjorn doesn't look at me, playing at, playing with the hookah pipe idly. Great, I take the mood completely. He's quite cute, despite being big and burly. He has very gentle features. I overlooked him before, but now, uh, when I don't feel weird looking straight at him, there's a tender charm behind those brown eyes of his. A another beer? Yeah, I'd like one. While Bjorn is grabbing us two more bottles, I lift up my empty one and read the label. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. All right, so we finally got more Bjorn. Fantastic. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!